warmly welcome from the Global Menu Camp Strategies 2015 in Berlin. I'm very glad that Mr. Stephen Bowers from Evonik find, found time to um, have a small chat about his work and his case study he's presenting. Thanks for your time. Okay, I'm Stephen Bowers. I work for Evonik Industries. Uh, this is my uh, 17th year with Evonik and I uh, currently am employed working in our C4 business, uh, mainly as a feedstock specialist. That basically involves me looking at our feedstock supply situation from uh, the oil well through to the steam cracker uh, and into our, our process plants in Marl and Antwerp. I also give advice to some of the other business units, um, but mainly my focus is on uh, looking after our facilities and uh, new projects on our C4 business. Um, what do you see as a main trend for your company and your industry? Well, at the moment, the hot topic is, is without a shadow of a doubt, the impact of shale gas in the United States and how that's going to uh, transform the American olefins market um, and in doing so, the impact that that might have uh, on the rest of the world, but particularly Europe. Okay, and you are here to do um, a case study on if shale gas is possible in Europe and... Yeah. Well, yes, that's always a possibility of shale gas uh, happening in Europe, but the current economic climate for shale gas in Europe is, um, let us say, a little difficult. Uh, the main obstacles are political obstacles rather than uh, uh, anything else because the public perception of shale gas is exceptionally poor and the uh, politicians really listen to what the public mood is rather than uh, the technical arguments for or against shale gas. Okay. And at the moment the, uh, the public has uh, an extremely negative view. What do you think? How could this change? How quick could it change is mm. something I wouldn't like to bet on, but I actually think that uh, it will be a long process. Certainly not in this decade will we see any substantial uh, progress with shale gas uh, production in Europe. If the politicians uh, sense that the shale gas is something that can be sold in the future, then things could start happening. But we, we need to invest an awful lot of money. Uh, what we don't have in Europe is a, is a gas gathering system. The Americans have a, an existing extensive gas gathering system which has been built up over decades. And it was fairly easy to tap into that system uh, when they started to exploit the shale gas. We don't have such a system in Europe, so mm. we would be building an infrastructure from scratch, and that would be reflected in the cost, and it's likely to add to the delays in implementing shale gas. So countries which uh, could, could move fairly quickly would be places like the UK, because there is a partial gas gathering system which could be uh, utilised. It's not in an, in an ideal place, but there's there's an existing infrastructure. But when you're looking at, at uh, other European countries, there is very very little uh, infrastructure, and that would require considerable sums of money. Okay, you said the mood in the um, population um, concerning shale gas is not the best. It has um, in fact a bad image. What do you think? What um what are the reasons for that? Or um. What do you think the population thinks about shale gas? That is not true. Well, there is a very effective anti-fracking lobby. Uh, some of their arguments uh, are sound. Uh, some of their arguments are not quite so sound. But they have been able to uh, influence the public opinion to an extent which uh, is is difficult to comprehend because uh, now the ball is, is sort of swung, or well, the pendulum has swung very much into their camp. We are on the back foot in trying to win public opinion over. Mm. Uh, the chemical industry itself always has had a bad perception in the public eye. Um, 
it's not going to be any made any easier for us to um, push forward our case for for hydraulic fracking simply because of our already bad public image. So yeah. it's seen by the public as as yes, it's the dirty old chemical industry um, trying to uh, uh, make excessive profits again, uh, which is far from the case. What the public don't realise is that without a petrochemical industry in Europe, we wouldn't have many things. Uh, we wouldn't have iPhones, for instance. We wouldn't have computers. We wouldn't have toothbrushes. Mm. It is all those polymers which uh, make our everyday life so much easier. After your presentation, what impression did you get from your peers? Do they support fracking in Europe or not? Um, I think most of the people employed in the chemical industry have a very pragmatic view and, and can understand that providing it's done safely, and, and it can be, it has to be done uh, in a controlled and a professional uh, way and it, it properly administered, it can be safe. Hmm. It only takes one accident though to cause a lot of uh, negative publicity which would set the whole process on, uh, back again. But it can be done safely and uh, providing the necessary safeguards are put in place, I don't think it's a problem and I think most of the chemical industry realise that it offers an opportunity to, to gain some competitiveness back. The point, strong point to remember though is that it's not necessarily going to be a cheaper source of supply by the time we've put our costs on into the uh, infrastructure that's required. We, we have to build it from scratch, but it will be a supply which is, is going to be from within Europe rather than from outside Europe. Okay. Um, which expectations do we have on this conference? What expectations on the conference? Well, for me, I'm not really a manufacturing person, so I've, I've come along today with a very open mind. I've, I've presented my uh, presentation uh, knowing full well that this is not really what I do on the manufacturing side. It's been very well received. I've uh, enjoyed what I've listened to on the manufacturing side because uh, it's given me another insight to, to how the manufacturing side is coping with some of the challenges in, in plant performance and operations and I, uh, I don't get involved on, on an everyday basis so it's been very useful to me. Okay, thanks a lot for your time and your insights and to your work and yeah, I hope to see you next year again. Okay, thank you. Bye.